So I have this 120 mil fan here and it is extremely dusty, ergo in desperate need of a thorough deep cleaning. Chances are if you haven't cleaned your system in maybe six months or more, depending on where you live and what your environment and your immediate environment, like your room looks like, your fans might look something like this as well. And if they do, I do recommend that you do clean them, at least dust them off, use a can of compressed air, something like that. Uh, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly deep clean fans like these. This is just a 120 mil cheap Antec fan here. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in a way that doesn't damage the bearings. So the one very sensitive part of this fan, apart from arguably the blades themselves, you don't wanna break the blades, but it, unless you're doing something stupid, you really shouldn't uh, break those when cleaning. Uh, but you wanna be careful about the types of chemicals and liquids you use around the bearings themselves because you don't want your fan to be damaged long-term. Maybe it, it runs loud, you have this weird grinding noise, or maybe it just outright doesn't work all together. Uh, so we'll talk about all of those things and I'll talk about how I specifically clean each of these fans in all of my PCDC videos. I'll walk you through step-by-step, step, no BS. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying activation watermark, hop on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for fractions of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in seconds and activate your OS here. Bye bye watermark. And be sure to use our new offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. Now when it comes to the tools you'll need to clean a conventional 120 mil PC fan, uh, I like to start first with an electric duster. You don't need an electric duster though. You could use a, a can of compressed air, uh, an air compressor, like a, you know an industrial one even. Uh, would work fine. Uh, you also want some isopropyl alcohol. I recommend 90% or above. Some shop towels, paper towels, something lint-free, preferably something that's not gonna just like fray very easily. And then some Q-tips. Now, a lot of people have been saying, well, Greg, why don't you use brushes? Brushes work just as well. And you get the anti-static ones uh, so they don't cause any harm to, to any uh, SMDs on, on these boards that you're cleaning. Uh, and you'll get the job done a lot faster, right? Well, I like the precision aspect of Q-tips. Yes, it does take a lot longer to clean some of these things with Q-tips, but when it comes to fans in particular, which is a lot of hard to reach places, these Q-tips come in very handy. So these four things are what I would recommend to get you started. I'll have all my cleaning gear linked down below, but focus on these four for the fan in particular. So after you've inspected the fan in question, determine whether or not it does in fact need a deep cleaning, I like to start with this guy right here, the electric duster. You could also use a vacuum if you don't wanna blow this dust around in your room, I understand that. Take it outside, uh, that would be a good way to do things. I keep things indoors, it's easier to film in here, and I do deep clean my office after every one of these uh, computer deep cleanings. Uh, some people have been concerned about that, I understand, but uh, for the effective video, it makes sense for me to film this stuff indoors. Uh, the vacuum aspect, there's nothing that a vacuum could damage on a fan itself. Now you could damage the bearings if you do not hold the blades while you are blowing air or sucking air in. Uh, so if I do this, and you can see those blades start to spin, they will spin very, very fast. We're talking hundreds of RPM here. If you start seeing that happening, you're gonna need to hold down the blades, make sure this doesn't spin. You will hurt the bearings, uh, probably not to the extent that you think you will. I mean, forums tend to scare people quite a bit uh, when it comes to this kind of stuff. But uh, in general, you want to reduce the amount of spin in these blades if you intend to use them for a few more years. So I'm gonna hold one of these blades and I'm gonna give this fan a good thorough dusting all the way around, focusing especially on on the uh, cross member, the little cross frames underneath the blades themselves and around the edges of the frame. You can see it gets very dirty on the sides, maybe not on that side, but uh, it's dirty on, yep, that side's really bad. So we're gonna clean all that up with the duster and then we'll hit the rest of this with IPA. So here we go, I'm gonna hold one blade. And when we're done with one side and the edges, flip the fan over, it will be especially dirty, more than likely underneath each of these blades. So really get at it with this duster. Uh, these bristles, by the way, nylon, shouldn't cause any static issues if you use this on PCBs. Of course, there's no PCB involved, uh, at least with the external parts of the fan. So no worries there. Now, one more point of special interest here, right in the center, right where the bearings are, you're gonna wanna blow air sideways or get it as much sideways as you can. A lot of dust is gonna get trapped in here between this external housing and the bearings themselves. And uh, if we blow this air kind of horizontally here, a lot of this dust you'll see will come out the side. Uh, it's gonna be very difficult to get anything else in there, any other tool without damaging the bearings or fully disassembling the fan, which we don't wanna do because chances are we won't be able to reassemble it properly. Uh, so just getting enough compressed air through there should dislodge 
dislodge much of the uh, the clumped up dust that we really want to get rid of because that could damage the bearings long term. Here we go. All right, and uh, looking pretty good so far. Now, a lot of people would, would see this here and decide, yep, this is good enough for me, uh, but I would not personally call this a deep cleaning. Yeah, you threw a lot of compressed air at it, but there's still quite a bit of dust, especially on the inside of this frame, which is very difficult to get to with compressed air or any air gun. Uh, so we're going to introduce the Q-tips now and the IPA. We're gonna be dipping these Q-tips in the isopropyl alcohol uh, frequently, and we'll be swapping out Q-tips as they become, you know, filled with dust. We don't want to smear dust everywhere, so you'll want to use more than a few of these Q-tips. So I will pour some IPA into the cap of this bottle, and then I'll just pull out a small handful of Q-tips here. Dip it in, make sure it's thoroughly soaked. Now I'm gonna start with the inside of the frame first. That's where I see most of the lingering dust. And then we're gonna clean individual fan blades, and then we'll clean the exterior of the frame and uh, give it a once over, make sure there's no other visible dust. Now this is what the Q-tip looks like after one go around of the inside of the frame. And you can see it's pretty dark, pretty gross. All of this is dust. And uh, when it gets this bad on one head of the Q-tip, we wanna flip it over to the clean side, dip it in IPA again, and continue cleaning. You'll see a lot of streaks in whatever material you're cleaning if you do not uh, swap Q-tip sides after it begins looking like this. You'll end up just smearing the dust around. You're not really accomplishing anything there. So again, I'm still scrubbing the inside of this fan frame. Much of the lingering dust is here. This is what you'll see most of the time accumulate uh, and remain after just blasting it with compressed air. Uh, so the difference between just a standard dusting and a thorough deep cleaning, in my opinion, is when you start whipping out the Q-tips, getting precise like this, reaching those normally hard to reach places. Now, if you notice any streaking while doing any of this, it's essentially the IPA evaporating and leaving behind whatever grime and dust and gunk was previously in that fluid uh, before it disappeared. Uh, this is a bit like washing a car. Uh, if you leave the water on the surface of the car long enough, it will evaporate and you'll notice that you'll get these water spots. It's actually not the water itself leaving the spots, it's the the grime, the minerals, whatever might be in the water that doesn't evaporate with it. Um, that's what's left on the car. Basically the same thing happening here on this plastic. So you can see there is a bit of streaking there on the inside of the frame and this goes all the way around it. So uh, using a shop towel or something similar, just give it a good scrub and all of this should disappear. You, this applies pretty much to any part of the fan or any plastic surface for that matter that can leave these stains behind. Now the next thing to do is clean these individual fan blades, both the tops and the bottoms, as well as the edges where a lot of dust will clump up, become very chalky, and you'll see a brown little halo around each of these blades. It looks very weird. This will be a tedious process, just a heads up, but I guarantee this will make your fans look brand new if you do it thoroughly. So we're gonna dip our Q-tip in IPA, and then we're gonna start with our first fan blade. We're gonna work around the edges first, get that dust off the edges, and then we're gonna to work toward the middle, give it a thorough scrub. It will look dark, at least until the IPA uh, evaporates, and then we'll see whatever's left behind and we can give it uh, one more thorough scrub with the Q-tip. So we've already got two of these done. Obviously this process will take much longer if your fan blades are uh, much larger, if you have like a 200 millimeter fans, uh, or if you have very small fans, but many small blades, this is especially the case on graphics card fans. Those can get very annoying to clean after a while. But uh, yeah, the, the fans themselves are things that always catch viewers' eyes because they're always rotating, right? Fan blades are always moving, just a, a moving part in general will tend to catch the eye of uh, the beholder. And that's why we wanna make sure these look very clean at the end of it. Also wanna focus on the center here. We're gonna cover the top of it. Yes, you'll see a few streaks again. We'll address those in a second. Just picking up any remaining dust with this IPA. Trying not to smear any dust as we go along. I probably need a, a new Q-tip here. Uh, and then we're also gonna work on the sides of this little central housing. A lot of dust will get trapped in here as well. Now I'm gonna take a dry Q-tip and I'm gonna run over everywhere I just cleaned uh, with the IPA. This is gonna pick up a lot of those streaks. Don't wanna push too hard, by the way, on these fan blades. Obviously, you don't wanna break these. The fan will spin uh, with an uneven uh, weight distribution and that will damage the bearings even more. Probably kill the fan, or at least make it run very loud in the immediate. So be very careful here. Don't break these blades. Apply just enough force. Give a good scrubbing action here. 
We're gonna do the exact same thing, by the way, for the undersides of each of these blades. And we're gonna give the surrounding frame here a good once over, focus on these crevices with the Q-tips, get a lot of the dust out of these small corners here. A lot of it likes to hang out, especially after being hit with the uh, electric duster. Looking good, focus on the, the screw hole areas. A lot of dust gets trapped in there. Any fan cable channels, dust in there. And then uh, you can give the little X frame underneath here a good once over as well. Make sure no dust remains. Got a cable sticking out down there. We'll address that when we flip this over. And then a couple more things I want to do. Hit the entire front part of this fan that you just cleaned. with the duster, I forgot to say that. And then also, yeah, clean up your workstation because when we flip this fan over, we don't want everything we just cleaned to be smushed back into the dust we just removed. That would be counterproductive. Now the first thing I like to do here is remove this set of wires that runs down this channel along the side of the fan frame. It keeps the wires from getting snagged and caught in these blades while the blades are spinning. Uh, so it makes sense to have one of these, but this fan in particular has this weird bracket, a little plastic bracket that is holding all of this down. I'm actually gonna break that with a uh, set of wire cutters just because I, I feel like it's a bit redundant. Um, but uh, we'll get that out and then we'll pull these wires back so that we can clean underneath these wires in this channel. A lot of dust will accumulate in here. It looks like two of these wires are for the Molex connection on this fan. This is an old fan, so we actually don't have a typical three pin or four pin connector attached. Uh, and then the smaller triple set of wires here is for the integrated fan controller. So we have LMH, low, medium, high, RPM, obviously. We pull all these back, take a Q-tip, and we're gonna scrub all the way through this channel here, where a lot of dust usually gathers. And we're also gonna to wanna to clean the entire length of each of these wire strands. And to do that, I like to take a shop towel, I'll soak it in IPA, and then I'll grab the strands of wires and I'll run them carefully all the way down their lengths with the shop towel. And that will allow a lot of that IPA to soak up dust. You can see <laughs> the dust strands already gathered there. You can do it a few times, make sure there's no other dust remaining. Uh, you could also blast these wire strands with some air, probably get most of the loose dust out. You don't wanna go in between these wires as well. It's a very thorough process here, but I, I guarantee you it'll pay off in the end. Just bear with me. And once these housings are taken care of, I wanna take some compressed air, blast it inside the Molex connector on both sides in particular where dust can gather. Also aimed a bit inside those channels before we set these wires back in where they'll remain for the duration of this video. And there we go. The cables themselves should look pretty darn good now. We can get a Q-tip dipped in IPA and start focusing on the undersides of these fan blades. Very meticulous work here. Like I said, it will pay off in the end. You'll have a brand new fan, or what looks like a brand new fan. That's pretty much what we're going for here. And remember to go back over these once again with a dry Q-tip to get rid of these streaks left behind, essentially the remaining dust uh, that we could continue picking up with IP if we wanted. We just don't wanna waste the alcohol if uh, we can help it. Give it a quick scrub here. Also we're gonna focus on the uh, center part of the fan, getting dust up from underneath those as well. Looking much, much better under here already. There's something so, so therapeutic about this process. Now, another important step, I'm gonna take a damp Q-tip and I'm gonna stick it in between the fan blade housing and the uh, center part of the frame here. And I'm gonna gently rotate the fan blades themselves all the way around. And as we're doing this, the Q-tip is picking up a lot of the dust that gets trapped on the underside of the central housing. Uh, we don't wanna push the Q-tip all the way in. Obviously, we don't wanna damage the bearings. We don't even wanna soak the bearings for that matter. If we can help it, probably wouldn't be a big deal. I have just straight up washed fans before. As long as you don't spray water directly into the bearings, it's usually not a big deal. You don't need to re-lubricate or anything. Uh, but I'm just doing this around the outside 
to get rid of the dust that you would see on the back sides of these fans. And lastly, gonna give the frame one good scrub with IPA and Q-tips. Focusing on dust that gets trapped in these crevices as usual. Also get the screw holes again underneath these wires. Now once this is good and dry, we'll take the electric blower one last time, give it a good scrub with the nylon brush attached to the end of it. So any loose dust that lingers as a result of this cleaning should be blown away, or if you're using a vacuum, sucked up. And I think we are about there. A little more dust remaining. Otherwise, this is a fancy looking fan for being a cheap $5 uh, Antec option. All right, let's give it a blast of air. And check this out, a really clean fan here. Yeah, we've got some scratches in the plastic, just a, a product of it being old, but I don't see any dust. That was the goal. This looks so much better than it started. Now be sure to look over each of these fans after believing that you're done. Again, you, you don't wanna realize that you missed a spot after you've already put it back into your system. Uh, I noticed a few places where I had missed uh, just tiny little pockets of dust. I thought I had scraped over those with the Q-tip and I hadn't. Uh, so I cleaned those up. Fan looks so much better now. Again, you're not gonna get everything out. There will be a few blemishes that are just kind of permanently scarred into the plastic or whatever material the fan is made of. Uh, and and that, that's just, you know, you're gonna have to deal with that with age, really any fan out there, uh, especially these cheaper fans here. Uh, but what I can say is that the difference between how this started and how it looks now is night and day. And that is probably rewarding in and of itself, especially if you plan to reuse this in your current rig or a different rig. You didn't have to go out and spend 15, 20 bucks on a replacement fan. You just thoroughly cleaned the one you already had and it looks virtually brand new. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. I would appreciate that. Also by giving this video a thumbs up, that is always appreciated. If you wanna see more videos like this, I will have them linked in the video description. Also be sure to check out our PCDC series where I clean viewer systems for free, deep cleans. And uh, yeah, so if you like the way that this looked, the transformation involved there, we do time lapses of entire dirty systems being thoroughly cleaned. So those, uh, those I'm sure will be enjoyable to watch. Um, the other thing I've decided to name our fixing playlist where we fix viewer systems for free. I've decided to name that fix or flop because I'm not always gonna be able to fix whatever component is sent to me. Uh, I, I just wanna be you know, upfront and, uh, and not try to hide anything. I mean, if, if I run into an issue that I cannot fix, I cannot <laughs> seemingly diagnose what is wrong with it, um, that's a flop in my book. I always wanna fix viewer systems wherever I can, especially if they're if they're desperate and you know have no idea what's wrong. Um, it, it's always nice to kinda catch their reaction after I tell them, yeah, I was able to fix it, no problem, and it doesn't cost you a dime. Um, it just you know, gives me a chance to make additional content for the channel, and uh, most of you seem to enjoy those kinds of videos. So I'm appreciative of those who've lent their systems and their individual components to me to clean and to fix, and uh, more like that will be coming soon, especially in this market where you, know, you can't really justify spending three times what a graphics card used to cost in a new build today, um, a lot of people are falling back on either old hardware that's either faulty, defective, not working, or extremely dirty. Ergo, the PCDC and Fixer Flop playlists come in really handy there. Uh, or just, uh, they're just resorting to consoles, right? Uh, and that's, nothing wrong with consoles. I understand the appeal. I grew up playing consoles. I said this many times, but uh, if you can't afford to build a system right now because graphics card prices are just through the roof, which I totally understand, a console might be viable for you. And we've actually got a few consoles lined up in the fixer flop playlist that I'm going to see if I can fix. I've read a, a few different um, descriptions of issues. With some of these consoles, we have an Xbox one coming in uh, in a few days and I'm going to see if I can fix that. I think I'm going to open it up to, <sighs> in particular the consoles and maybe the graphics cards and things, I might open that up to be uh, to accept shipments. And what that'll basically mean is if you want your system or, or your component, I should say, fixed for free, uh, and you're willing to cover shipping, because I, that's not something that I can do for every person who wants to send something in, uh, and you're willing to accept the fact that I can't guarantee that it will be fixed, 
then that's fine. Um, you can you can ship it to me, and I'll provide more of those details in follow up fixer flop videos. But for now, uh, hopefully this was at least somewhat informative, maybe entertaining, just satisfying to watch. I understand these cleaning videos have that appeal, and uh, I'll be sure to follow up with more content like this very very soon. So again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you have not already. My name is Greg. Thanks for cleaning with me.